Hey, how are you doing today? This is OXDF, and today we're looking at the 2015 Advent of Code challenges. We're on day four, and we're solving it in Rust. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in here. It's called the Ideal Stocking Stuffer, um, and this is basically a play on uh, crypto coin mining. And uh, basically, when you do that, this is how crypto coin, crypto coin, or at least Bitcoin mining works: is that you have you do some proof of work, which often involves taking hashes um, to find a long prefix of certain number of zeros. So. In this case, what we need to do is find, find an MD5 hash um, in hexadecimal that starts with five zeros. Um, and the input to the hash is gonna be a secret key, the puzzle input given below, followed by a number in decimal. So we're gonna start with the lowest positive number. We wanna find the lowest positive number that produces a hash with five zeros on the front. Uh, no leading zeros on the number. And uh, yeah, so they say, you know, for example, if the secret key had been ABCDEF, uh, the num lowest number is 609043, and the hash of ABCDEF609043 is this right here. In fact, we can do that. Let's jump just for, let's grab this right here real quick and show we can find that hash. If we do uh, echo minus n, because we don't want the new line on the end, and we paste that in, and we pipe that into MD5sum, we get right here, and we, can, we confirm it does start with five zeros. Um, that doesn't confirm necessarily there isn't a lower number, but at least we see what we're trying to get to here. Um, so, and they give us a couple examples here to play with, and then our puzzle input is down here. Um, if you haven't watched my previous videos in this series, I did solve these challenges years ago in Python. I'm going back to them now in Rust, so um, that's why it already tells me I got them right. Um, we will get some point. I don't think I, I only got about halfway through the year, so. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump over here, and uh, I'm going to use my my Genday script to go ahead and get day four going. Um, it's just gonna use cargo to create me a day four package as well as download the input right here. Uh, and we'll go up to the my little stub of main.py that just reads in that input into the variable data. Um, in fact, let's call this key, just to make it cleaner here. Um, and uh, let's get started. So first, before we start programming, let's let's talk a little strategy. The, the challenge, for especially for someone new to a language here, is going to be first I need to build this string. So the string is going to be my key plus a number. Um, and then I need to hash the string. So I need to figure out how to do an MD5 hash. And I need to get that back in hexadecimal ideally as a string. Um, I need some way to take a substring. So basically just get the first five characters of that string and compare it to five zeros. Um, and then I need to be able to do a loop because I have to loop over numbers, incrementing, you know, incrementing by one and uh, until I find one that starts with five zeros. So first we're going to start by let's format that string. Um, we'll do, so we'll say let i equals one, that's where we start, and we'll say let s equals for string, um, and this will do, um, we could do the print line macro, but we'll actually do another macro that's very similar called format, like this, and it takes, it's the exact same thing except for it just returns the string instead of uh, printing it to the screen, and I think we can do something as simple as key sub i like this, and uh, then I guess we can put S here and let's give that a run. Cargo run. It helps if I carg run. Cargo run. Um, okay, this is interesting. Um, we're printing out the key and then we're printing out on the next line. Um, I, I, wonder, I wonder if this key has a. Um, here, let's do this. Let's put out key here. Make that a. If we just print the key, we'll get part two key. And if we run this into, oops, into XXD to get a hex dump, uh, you can see right here, key, the key is coming out here. Uh, there's a space followed by the key. These, this is the ASCII. And then there's actually two new lines. One of those is added by the print line. And the other one I think is being read in from input.txt. Um, we could test for this a little bit better if we do something like, uh, Coming, let's say uh, end key like this. So let's now run it again. And we can see, so here's the key itself. There's an OA for the new line. And then E-N-D-K-E-Y. And then there's the new line from the print string. So the problem is that our input is getting in a, is getting a, uh, a new line from it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use the trim, I believe it is, function, which will just strip new white space off. And uh, 
Let's come back down here and put S there and try this again, cargo run. And now we have the string we're looking for here. Um, oh, we don't really want end key here anymore, but so now we have the string key and then the number. So uh, we formatted the string. Um, next, we want to get a hash. And to do this, I, you know, I did some, a quick Google and there's a, the first thing I found is there's an MD5 crate um, or that's like a package um, in Rust. And so there's some nice example right here of how to use it. Um, let's, let's just grab this right here and say let h equals md5 compute and we don't want this let's see if we let's let's hope we can just pass in s right there now this is going to fail if i try to run this um we could try let's let's we'll, sh we'll show it it's going to fail though um and it's because it doesn't undeclared crate or module md5 so i have to come up here and just again in python i would do an import um so here i'll do a use md5 just like that and, and this is going to fail too and it's saying no external crate known as md5 and that's where you have to come in here um, into your cargo.toml file and put a dependency. Um, and for depend, so I, I can do things like um, MD5. So, and typically you have to show a version now. So I could say MD5 equals and then a version number. Um, there's a few ways I can get this. I can do a cargo search uh, MD5. And let's see, here's the top one right here. We have MD5 equals. And it says, you know, so that, that, that actually looks like a pretty good. Uh, didn't mean to control C that. Let's say anyway, we'll do uh we can grab the string right there, 0 0.7.0. Um we could also get this. I don't know if it is, I don't think it needs a semicolon there. Um we could also get this from the web page itself. Um you can see right up here it's version 0, 0.7.0 0 at the top corner. Um you can click on the source here as well and see it up here. Um, so, um that those all work. Um the other thing you can do, and you know, if you're building a real project, you, you're definitely gonna want to pin the versions of your dependencies. Um, but for something like this, I could also just do star and say, I want, it, give me the latest version. Um, but we'll stick with 070 for now. That'll work fine. Um, so now with that in our cargo.toml file, if we run again, so it doesn't know how to print the hash with the default formatter. Um, so let's go back and see where is, um, where is this? So they're getting it. They're using a format like that. let's come in here and just do the same thing. Thing. We don't close this. Um, <clears throat> see what they do. So I'm actually just going to put it here. Um, well, no, let's not. Let's do it down here. So we'll do a format bang, and then they're going to do um, whatever it is as hex comma h like that. And let's get rid of that line. I think that should do it. Let's give it a try. Cargo run. Cool. We got an MD5 hash. Um, and we can test this. Let's see. Um, uh, cat input text. So if we did an echo minus n, and let's copy that, paste it in, put a one there into MD5 sum, and we get that same hash. Ends in cab three, ends in cab three, starts at 800. So we are making the hash right here. This is cool. Okay, so now we need to compare this substring. So we need to do, um, we need to get this into a string. We kind of already saw how to do that. Um, we could say if uh, format bang like that, x comma h. And then to show this as a slice of a string, what I actually need to do is get the pointer and do that so that's how i'm going to get this is how i'm going to get the first five characters of that string so we're going to say if that equals like that uh print line uh found it no we'll put we'll put i there and so right now we're not going to loop this this whole thing just runs once so it's it's not going to do that but we can at least make sure that the test, that, that it doesn't error out. Oh, it does error out. Okay. Um, oh, because I need a bang there. Running it. Okay, so it ran. So presumably it was able to do this comparison and it was happy about it. And so um, we want to test it now. One thing, um, this would be a good tangent to go on here. Um, I want to be able to 
test this easily without like changing my input.txt. So I'm going to do a little bit of editing here to take uh, arguments from the uh, command line. And so if I'll do something like let args and make it a, a vector with strings like that equals env.args.collect. So that'll get all of those there. Now, again, this will error out if I don't come up here and also add in uh, use std e and like that. So now I've got the args here. Um, we could do, and so we can say something like um, let let key equals, maybe we should change this back to data now. Uh, like that data and let key equals if args.len equals one data else, you know, because it's a string, we're going to point to it, args.1. Like that, and we'll send it going. So now, if I save this, um, let's go ahead and while we're here, we're going to print hash at part one. Let's put the uh, key down here at part two. And so first, let's just make sure it runs. It does not. Um, oh, we aren't going to do args. Dot. We're going to do arg env because we're not doing an instance. We're doing a, like a method on the class. So we're going to, again, I'm probably using Python language here, but so you can see it read the, it's still reading the key out of the file here. That works well good. And if we put a, b, c, d, e, f, and now we have that and our hash changed. So now we can, now we can quickly test things. So um, if we go back here to the challenge prompt, they told us for A, B, C, D, E, F that that should be the I. So let's cheat a little and put that in and cargo run that. And look, we found it. We, it worked. So our, our code works. We just now we need to get into a loop. Um, so let's come in here and we're going to do loop. And this is this is how you do like a while true loop, basically. Um, indent there we need that perfect okay we're good there and so we're going to need i outside of so we'll let not i equals zero or probably one i don't know it doesn't matter it's not gonna be either of those um then we're going to create an s and we're not gonna i don't i don't actually know if it's better to create a mutable s up here and then just keep changing it or create a just recreate s over and over again here but we're going to go with it this way um, same thing with the hash, we'll create it, and then we'll do that. If it's there, instead of printing found it, what we're going to do is we're going to break, and we're going to come down here, and we're going to print i. Because that's the answer to part one. Uh, so if this works, we should be able to run it with um, a, b, c, d, e, f, Ooh. and, uh, oh, <laughs> okay, so I mean, if that works, we're going to be able to run it with ABCDF, and we're going to get back the answer 609043. Um, now, it didn't work because I, I got this nice while true loop that I never change i, so it's never going to change. So we need to come down here and do i equal, plus equals 1. And that was the warning that, that Russ was giving me is, you made this mutable variable, and then you never changed it, um, which I meant to change it. I just forgot. So um, nice Rust uh, fix there. And so this runs, and look at that in about... We could we could uh, time run that, and it takes about a second or two. Yeah, about a second and a half. We found we found it. Um, so let's go here and get rid of that and just run it with a puzzle input, and we've got an answer two eight two seven four nine, and that matches our number. That's our answer. So we solved it. Um, cool. Part two. Part two is not complicated. Uh, do it for six zeros, um, and they don't give us any. Uh, to test with, so we just got to test on our own. That's fine. We know, kind of know what we're doing at this point. Um, I think to do this, we could do, a, again, we could do a lot of copy and pasting here, but let's make a function. Um, function uh, solve, and it's going to take a key, it's going to take a, a number of zeros, like that. Um, I think that's, we'll, we'll start with that. And so we're going to take this loop, including the i, and we're going to run right here. So we're going to let a mute, we're going to create a mutable i. We're going to loop through. Um, we're going to mix the key. We're going to make the string. We're going to compute the hash. Um, we are going to. We need to change this, and so this is going to be num zeros right there, and then this 
we need to make, so what we're going to do is we're going to do format, and we're going to do a this with, no, let's see, we want to do zero, and then if you, the way you can do this is you do num zeros, and we're going to use a dollar sign to show that that's part that we, we're treating, that we want to treat this as a variable. Um, and so if we were to do, let's look at this real quick. If I were to put a five there and do colon zero five, uh, comma, do that. Okay. So that, that's a working, so that's a working thing. Let's talk about it. So this right here would say, take the thing you're putting in and make it, make sure it takes five spaces and pad it with zeros. I'm putting in zero, padding it with zeros, and we get five zeros. Um, I can put a variable here like this, but I need to put a dollar sign at the end to say, treat that variable inside of this expression that's really for, meant for formatting, treat this as a variable. That's what the dollar sign means. So now I'm going to check that. Um, so as long as num zeros is, so, so we set num zero to five, um, it's going to come in here and it's going to look at the first five characters and it's going to look for five zeros. The only other thing we need to do is we're not really breaking. What we're going to do is actually we're just going to return i. Um, and so now we, whenever we hit i, we'll just return it and we'll get this here. And so now we can come down here and say solve key five. That's a lot of changes. So let's see if that works. Um, of course not. We definitely, this seems like a lot of changes to have no errors. Let's see what we got here. Um, solve key five cannot be filled. We might need to, um, let's do let part one u32 equals solve e5. And then we'll just make the, oh, well, for one, don't, I wasn't supposed to have a semicolon there, but it still was, it still was yelling at me. Well, let's try that. Let's just make sure. Five. Yeah, I still think this is going to error out. Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't have that. Let's do this thing here. We do part one. We save that and we run. We still got an error. Solve key five u thirty two found. Oh, we didn't we didn't specify what we return. Like that. Uh, we have to do types. So key is going to be a string. And num zeros is going to be a u u thirty two. Probably be a u eight. But we'll just stick with that. Um. Back to string stuff. Oh, it's going to be a str. Um, at some point, I'll do a. I'll. I'll make sure I actually understand the difference between a string and an str. But um, we're not there yet. So uh, let's see. Expected reference u size found reference u thirty two. Okay, so we can make this a u size. And it is running, but it does not seem to be working. Um, it should solve very quickly. Something must be wrong with our function here. So we get this. Let's just for the sake of making sure we didn't screw things up. Let's make these, put these back to five. Make sure it works that way. Warnings about unused variables, that's fine. So let's try this. Um, let's set I to, what was our result? Grab that. Make that there. And here we're going to do a print line on S. Ooh. Like that. And then we're going to break. Make sure we, I don't want to run forever. Uh, Oh, are we still in a loop down?
So what I'm trying to do here is get some. Just I want to see what I'm gonna what I'm doing with here. Um, so that looks right. Let's see what the hash is then. Um, let's for the sake of ease move this up here. So we'll do format um, x like this. D5 compute. So now we have that, and now we can come down here and do just make this a bit cleaner. So that's H. I wonder if we do print line. Oops. I'm sure I'm doing something really stupid here that you all are screaming at the screen uh, as to my errors. Uh, let's run that again. H. Um, that is stupid. Let's keep let's keep going here. Um, so we do have so that is working good. Um, we are still getting the right hash. It does not compare correctly. Um, so let's see. How do I get uh, let x equals format that. Oh my, I think I know the problem. That is not supposed to be a string. <laughs> that was the problem. So effectively what was happening, so what I, what I worked my way through here, I was making S what I wanted. So we can, we put a print in there, we made sure that worked. We were printing the hash that we wanted. We saw, we were getting a hash with five zeros. So that was working. So clearly something was failing at this comparison. And what was happening was this, when I pass a string in here and tell it to zero pad, it just isn't working right. In fact, we should, let's, um, we'll add in here real quick. Um, let S1 equals uh, format 05, oops, like that, comma zero. And let S2 equal that in strings, and then we'll do print line uh, s1 and s2. And we'll save and we'll run that. Let's see if that runs. And so you can see here, it s1 formatted exactly what I wanted, s2 did not. And so that's why I was never hitting that and we were getting into a basically never ending loop. Um, although I'm surprised there must be something funky going on here because if it can't just be straight one zero because actually let me, let me, let me, see, let me put that back in. Now I'm, this is a rabbit hole I realize, but we're going to see, um, let's do, let's, let's comment, let's just put, let's do a big comment here until the end. So now we're just printing S1 and S2. And let's run that into XXD. Oh, are we not printing S1 and S2? Doesn't like solve because it's never there. All these unused stuff. Oh, Rust is not happy with me trying to debug. Let's see. Um, sorry for the tangent here, but maybe you find this interesting. I'm learning something as we go. Um, so we run that. It's now still going to get yelled at about FT5. Still don't like that. Where do we print? Did I not, did I click, did I not? I put the comment too soon, okay. There we go. Okay, this should print. Okay, so we have, uh, that's S1 colon space, and we have one, two, three, four, five, and a new one. We have S1, S2 colon space, zero space, space on the end, space, space, Zero space 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 so four spaces and then a new line. So that's why I, at first I saw the, the just the zeros and I thought oh it should match one zero, but it doesn't because it's doing spaces on the end. That was a really long tangent into that uh, error. Hopefully that was interesting. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Um, and I think we've I think we've got to solve here. Um, so we're gonna come up here and we're going to like this. We've got solve, it now takes it, we think it's gonna work. Um, we're gonna call this and we're gonna make sure we get a part one. 
let's go ahead and run this one more time. Um, cargo run. What was unused in here now? Num zeros. Okay, we'll fix that. Okay, so that is looking good. Um, let's go back up here, and this needs to be num zeros. That still works. Now we're just going to do a little bit of pieces at a time, because when we break something, we want to know what broke. And so here, what we need to do is replace this five with num zeros, and then a dollar sign so that it works. And if we do that, it still works. So now, after all that, we have the function working, and we can just do the same thing here, where we say, let part two equal solve for six, and we'll put part two right there. And I think this might take a minute to, oh, we got zero right away. Um, oh, I think we broke it. Let's see. And we have this here, put that back to one. No wonder it's running so fast. So it runs here, we got part one, and we're gonna keep going. We could do something where, um, this will be interesting, let's check out how long this takes. And while this is running, assuming it's gonna work, um, it takes more than a minute or so, I'm gonna, I think, I think we must have broken something, but what we could do is put in here a um, start equals a start of uh, u32, let's see, we'll make it u size to be consistent. And we can set, oh, why don't we just make it high? Um, I don't know if that's mutable. Let's, hold on, let's, let's make this a start of u size, come in here and make this start. Um, because we know if we didn't find any with five starts that we definitely didn't find any with six starts. So we can come down here and say, this starts at one and this starts at part one. So we can just pick up where we left off and keep going. Um, so that took 28 seconds without the cheating on the second one, just jump forward. Uh, let's run this one again and see, ooh, okay, errors. Let's see, what do we got? Um, can't convert U. Okay, we, we don't wanna make, I guess we want this to be U32, like this. And let's run it. Okay, so it took, 30 sec took 28 seconds when I did it successfully without skipping ahead. So I don't know if it's gonna save us how much time this is actually gonna save us, but uh, We'll see in about 10 seconds, I guess, uh, maybe less. Um, so if it wasn't clear to what you what we did, basically, because part one tries all the numbers up to the solution of part one, why we can start part two right at that point. We don't have to start back at one and retest all of these because they're not going to succeed. Um, there we go. It did not really save us any time, but uh, and that's probably makes sense because this is like two twenty. Well, twenty percent. I don't know. Oh no, two no, percent. This is like two percent of three percent of the way into this, so it's gonna save us fractions of seconds. So, um, awesome. Thanks for sticking through with me through that tangent. Um, that was a bit lengthy, longer than I expected, but hopefully it was interesting. And uh, this again, this this is this is fun because this is a challenge I think I could have solved in two minutes in Python. And uh, to have a chance to play with it in Rust and continue to learn stuff, that's why we're doing this. So. I would love it if you're going to solve along with me. Please post your a link to your repo, your GitHub, your GitLab, uh, your Pastebin. You know, throw some code into a comment in this YouTube video. I would love to see it. Um, I'd love to see how other people are approaching these problems. Um, you know, go close, 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 close this video and go just try to do it on your own now. Um, even if you've already seen it, it ends up looking just like mine. That's that's cool. Um, so anyway, thanks for sticking around with me till the end, and I will talk to you next time.